Well, this is Joe McGee. Welcome to our podcast. Make sure that you subscribe and please share the podcast with your friends. That is the number one way you can help us reach people with God's love and healing. We love you guys. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Hey, everybody. It's Joe and Angel. Welcome to another Mailbag Monday where Angel and I take time and answer questions that you guys have sent in. There are quite a few, so let's jump in, Angel. Oh, we're so glad to be here today. So, first of all, thank you so much for your support. Uh, you help make this happen, yes. and uh, you really bless us. Send in your questions. We love hearing from you. And if you need prayer, send that in, too, because yeah. we certainly would love to agree yes. with you. All right, Joe. My wife and I weathered the financial storm during COVID, but now it seems like we are struggling to make ends meet. I'm just not sure what to do. I can get a second job, but don't want to sacrifice the little time my wife and I already have together. Well... Uh, we've all been there. Everybody's been there, uh, even before COVID. And so, uh, I have to watch how I answer this because, uh, I grew up in a very blue collar family and, uh, and we didn't believe in a 40 hour work week. If you have to, we're going to work 60 hours a week because we're dropping babies and, you know, we, we got stuff we need to pay for. Um, my sister, when I was a kid, got shot in a hunting accident, uh, uh, her kidney stopped working. She had a, a transplant. It was expensive. Had to get shots every day. And we're, we're just, uh, you know, rent was $35 a month. It was cheap. You know, gasoline was 25 cents a gallon. But all of a sudden, man, we are struggling to make ends meet. So I grew up in the family. Like, what are you trying to do? We're trying to make ends meet. What are you going to do? We're going to do extra jobs. So my dad was an electrician. So every weekend we rewired a house or a boat dock or did something for somebody. We worked all the time. You know, it was a six day a week, automatically work week of every, every week. And so I kind of grew up with that. So when I became an engineer, I thought, Hey, I'm doing good. Well, I start dropping a lot of babies. So we're going to do well. I might take a job. And they'd ask you, Hey Joe, can you work on Saturday? Yes. Hey Joe, can you work late Friday night? Yes. Joe, can you come on Sunday afternoon? Yes. And I always said yes. And so it never bothered me because what are you doing? Oh, it was just sort of a mindset. I'm going to do whatever it takes to pay for my family. So it was always a simple answer to me. So when I get asked that, people don't like messing with their system. They got a nice 40 hour work week system and it's great. God bless America. But most of the world doesn't work 40 hours a week. Most of the world works a lot. And so, uh, we've been blessed to be here. So when you get through the code or whatever, well, we just got to make some adjustments. So, um, I had teachers of mine when I was a Christian school administrator. Um, one guy, he had six kids, six boys. And he worked every weekend at the local grocery store. What's he doing? He's stocking the shelves, the Coca-Cola and the Pepsis and you know, the Sprites and whatever. And then he'd work a little quick trip place on a Sunday afternoon. He did whatever it took. Now, both of them have degrees. They live up in uh, North State right now. They're doing very well. But there was a season where, matter of fact, they rented out one of their bedrooms to one of the Bible school students, and they didn't have any extra bedrooms. We go do We do whatever it takes. You do whatever it takes for that season. It, this won't last forever, but what is it? What do you need? Well, do whatever it takes. It's a long answer. Well, and I do, I do agree with that. I do think there's a spiritual element to this as well. And 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 this is what I would say. I think that everybody is struggling a bit in this economy. Yes. Uh, obviously, things have changed in the last couple of years. Uh, our gas is yeah. increasing by yeah. the day. Yes. My elect, my electric bill doubled and yes. i was shocked i was like yes you know what kind of car I could be driving for this <laughs> and um uh, <clears throat> i mean things have changed dramatically uh now our income didn't change but our outgo certainly has changed and so i very much can relate to what you said now here's the spiritual element of it. that's the practical fleshly element of it but there is a spiritual side to this and there's a couple things i'd say to you in regards to this one is that <clears throat> the bible talks about giving us witty inventions and ideas. And and we don't talk about that very much, no, we do actually. Not. I don't know that I've ever heard anybody talk about that. But, you know, God wants to be in, involved in our dreaming life and our fulfilling our purpose life, too. And that's part of it. So, I mean, but we have to apply our faith to that. And in that, I think I would start saying that, God, you've given me witty ideas and inventions. Yeah, I confess <laughs> I have the mind of Christ, the wisdom of God. I mean, I get up in the morning. I have the, I've got the mind of Christ today. God's going to order my steps. I'm going to be in the right place at the right time. 
God's going to open doors for me that no man can shut. I've done that for so many years because I had to. Angel, you know, when she's a single mom, we had to. There was no option. I'm believing God. Every day of my life, I'm believing God. And so how do you do that? Well, I start saying what God said. I'm praying what God said to pray. Uh, it, there's both sides. There's the work, but there's the spiritual side to it. If you're not doing both, you're going to come up short somewhere. The other thing that I would say is years ago, I heard a great preacher, a fantastic old preacher, and he said, and I've never heard anybody say this before either. He said that God said he would bless our storehouses. Ooh. And he said, most of us just have one storehouse. Yep. And uh, so I started listening to what he said. He goes, you know, <clears throat> I have a storehouse for like if things go wrong with my house, upkeep. I have a storehouse for vacations. I have a storehouse for, you know, retirement. And he said, and every time I get paid, if it's a dollar, five dollars or whatever, I just put it in the storehouse, what I can in each storehouse. And I always put a little something in there yeah. and I just ask God to bless it. Well, I was just like, well, we, we had a new church and we were just starting. I said, well, that's right. He's absolutely right. And I said, <laughs> I'm going to do that. <clears throat> I said, every time, you know, something comes in, we got to put some money in a storehouse. And I created all these different storehouses just like they did. And God supernaturally blessed yes. those in a huge way. Actually, now that I'm saying that, I need to get back to that. I haven't <laughs> thought about that in years. But Because when you start, you, you're so offended. Like, oh, Lord, I, all I want to do is put two bucks in this thing. That's not going to do anything. Well, it's two bucks but you, more than you had last week. And it starts to grow, and God yes. just blesses. So yes. if you do have to get a second job or something for a season of time, Take those storehouses and trust God that it will yeah. just be for a season of time. Yes. Uh, a lot of times now people have second incomes. They do stuff on the Internet and different things. So there's other creative ways that you can do things. I empathize with you very much. I think we as a na we as the world are going through this right yes. now. And so uh, this is a time to lean on God. God this is said, a time to do all we can in the natural God and trust him for out. the supernatural. There's always a way out, but you got to look for it. Well, yeah, angel, you got to look for it. There's got to be something I can do. What can I do? But it can't be just on you. It no. has to be the God factor yeah. as well. Yes, it does. Great question. All right, Joe, my husband is very anxious about the future, and I see my kids taking on that same nature and attitude. How do I help them if my husband doesn't change himself? Well, you've got to take it on yourself, you know. Uh Bible's just loaded with scriptures about the future. You know, take no thought. Take no thought. Don't worry about it. Road you cares over to God, where God cares for you. Uh, you're not supposed to be worried about anything. Worry's a sin. It's a sin to worry. <laughs> so, so I just, I just would. When I first started, I got a three by five card, and I put three scriptures on it. I had three scriptures on every three by five card. What's this? Well, this is my don't worry card. Road you cares over to God. So every day, man, God, I got a lot of thoughts on my mind. None of them are good. Well, God, I'll just go give these thoughts to you. And so I used to just take a yellow pad and I'd write down everything I'm thinking. Well, how are we going to pay for this? How are we going to get this? How are we going to get this kid into college? I need a new transmission. Man, the tires are baller and the baby's behind. And I just write them down. And I just said, well, Lord, there's all my need. You said, I'm to come bold to the throne of grace, get mercy up in time of need. And I got a lot of need. So I'm going to roll all this over in you because you know what I need before I needed it myself. You said you'd supply my needs, so I'm just going to wad this up, throw this trash can, and I'm going to give it to you. I'm just going about my business today. i got a lot of stuff to do today. And every day, I remember one time it was almost three weeks, I would write it out every day, wad it up, throw it in the trash can. I'm just giving my cares to God. I just give my – and I had to mentally do that to get it used to, no, if I care this, I, I'm not God. I can't fix this. Only God can fix this. So I got to God I have learned we could do I gave it to God. I heard somebody say yesterday, now I don't know if it's true, I haven't researched it yet, but I'm going to put it out there. It said 365 times it says in the Bible, do not be afraid. Ooh. I, I don't know that that number is accurate, but I can tell you it does say that an awful lot. Um, and it talks about the peace of God. Yeah. It got, it's that God is our very present help in a time of need. Um, there's so many things that God has for us in resting. Now, the world is barraging us with fear, oh, whether man. it's through the media, through movies, oh, through video games, through everything. Everywhere we turn. You're not afraid. Listen, we'll give you something to be afraid about. Yeah. If you listen to the world, 
then you're going to take on anxiety. Uh, the whole COVID thing, people were listening to the news and children picked it up. My daughter is a preschool teacher. My son also teaches uh, right after her first, second, third grade. And they said the anxiety among children today is unbelievable and how much it has set kids back, the fear. It, my daughter is tiny, 4'11", 95 pounds, and she said <laughs> her neck yesterday hurt so bad because the kid was just clinging to her. And, and, and just there was so much fear and anxiety. That is from the devil. Peace is from God. Yep. Confidence is from God. Yes. Uh, you know, that's why he sent the Holy Spirit. Yes. The Holy Spirit is our comfort, uh, our very present help in a time of need. Yes. So what I would do if I were you is I would start speaking those scriptures. I'd put three by five cars all over the house with those scriptures all over them. I'd start making your kids start saying them. Yeah. And every time they hear something negative, start with a positive. And every time maybe your husband turns on the news or something else, I don't even watch the news. Nope. Because it doesn't affect me because I live by a different standard. And so I I just don't even watch it because it's just full of doubt and unbelief, which it's trying to do. The devil knows his days are numbered. <laughs> He's does. coming out of all the stops uh, with, you know, s- sexual stuff with stuff with. It's just disgusting what we're hearing about all over the land. And we're people, all going to die early. They're going to blow us up. There's going to be a nuclear explosion. And and you know you hear in the in the Bible says in the last days good is evil and evil is good. Yep. So so we can't look at what the world is saying. If we do, we are going to be consumed with fear. Well, the Bible says think on these things. Whatever is lovely, honest, just, praiseworthy, the good report. Think on these things. Don't think on those things. What those things? The fear of things. Don't think on that. Think on these things. You've got to control your own thought life. You can't let a thought bounce around your head like a ping pong ball on a concrete floor. You don't think. How do you change what you think? People ask, well, Joe, how do you change what you think? You get your mouth moving. Your, your brain will follow your mouth. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say I'm rich. Call those things to be not as though they are. Well, people say, well, you're just goofy. No, I'm biblical. I'm doing what God said. How do you fight an unbelieving world that you're just buried in every day, trying to scare with new stuff all the time? There's a new disease, uh, new uh, things coming, the finances going under, we're going all broke. No, I'm a child of the living God. I'm going to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Everything I put my hand to is going to prosper. I'm surrounded with a shield of divine favor. People like me, they don't know why they like me. you got to start saying what God says, but you can't say what God says if you don't know it. So you got to get that Bible open, get in a great local church, listen to your pastor, fellowship with the saints, and start quoting some of God's word. Yes. It'll change your world. It will. It absolutely will. And, uh, you know, the, there's a spirit of, of fear. Yes. And it's real. You, you can bind that. That yes. has no right to come into your household. Nope. And certainly not over your children. So um, Listen, we've done some people think would be silly things. We would known at every doorpost of our house. With oil. Now, I speak of, Father, no spirit of fear is going to come in this house. With long life, you're going to satisfy and show us your salvation. We have divine favor. Angels, there's so many angels around our property at night, you can't even count them. The Bible says that. They're innumerable. So many angels watch over the saints of God. And so you've got to start thinking what God's already said and say what he said. Realize, I don't have a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. God said that. I didn't say that. And he's God also promised us a sweet sleep. So oh, I, I would anoint the oh. beds and say, Woo, yes. my children can have a sweet yes. sleep. They will not have bad dreams. Yeah, we've done. They we've will wake up refreshed. Prayer cloths and stuck them under the pillowcase because my kid lays ahead. You may not know it, but I, that thing's anointed. You're going to sleep good tonight in Jesus' name. So you have authority, Mama. Yes. You can change this situation. Yes. All right, Joe, what's the best? Easily understood translation to help teach your children the Bible. New Living Translation, my favorite. And I've talked to Bible a long time. There's a lot of great translations. I, I, there's a lot of them. And uh, people say, what's your favorite translation? Well, pick you one out. And so, but I like the New Living Translation. It's a modern English. It's like a greased banana peel and a wet bar of soap. But I, I do think Joe has a great book that uh, <laughs> that he really, if you have smaller children, that, that that book, what is that called? Egemeyer's Children's Bible Storybook. Ruth Egemeyer, uh, uh, Warner Press, hardback book. Any bookstore in America has got it, Christian and it's secular. 
And so go and said, I'm looking for Eggermeyer's Bible storybook. Oh, it's right here. Hardback, she was like 80 when she wrote it. She never had any kids, but she taught kids a whole lot. It is the best book I have ever read. And so people and said. I remember that time we saw uh, Billy Graham's wife reading that book to her reading children. Reading that book to her own children. Even Billy Graham's family used that book. Phenomenal book to read to your kids. Short story. doesn't take three or five minutes to read every story. I said, just read a story a day. Just do it with the breakfast table, the dinner day. Hey, you want to read a short story? Don't make it a religious thing. Just read a story. And that is important because in so many churches today, we don't have Sunday school. Nope. You know, as a kid, I was raised in church. And as a kid, that's really where I learned the Bible more. Yes. Because I <laughs> yeah. kind of checked out in the service, yeah. to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm on the back of unless, unless the pastor's wife would start to come pray for us and we'd all go, here comes <laughs> here comes Esther. Oh, and we'd man. start to pray as hard as we yeah. could. But, uh, yeah, so because of that, you know, the parents have to kind of beef up their game a little bit, and that is a great way to yeah. start the day with your kids. Yes. So, but in LT, New Living Translation, that's my favorite one. I oh, love that one, too. I know. Very good. We love you guys so much. Praying you have a great, successful day week of increase yes. in your finances with your family Every area god you bless like. you we love you so much have a great one thanks guys be sure to join us monday wednesday and friday to hear more of what god can do in your life it's got a great future for you and your family and we're here to help you get there please make sure you visit joe mcgee ministries on facebook youtube and instagram there you find all of our friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family while you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.